Ah, excellent. Now hopefully we'll get a yeah, great. Uh, that's that's the nice thing with having a a, a, a technician online. Uh, thank you very much, Romain. So uh, welcome to today's lecture. Uh, I'll try to give you uh, some perspective on on uh, our models and views. Uh, the theme, uh, the second and third theme. Uh, that is 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 just to to uh, give you some some uh, more in-depth understanding of, of viewpoints and of course views and 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 uh, also to some extent models um so more or less focus on on, on documentation and i put this uh uh i put this uh, slide almost uh, well so far on every in each lecture i introduced it in in the first one and, and and the fourth step is document everything in the view uh and that is uh, to some extent about documenting the stakeholder the concern in a view so all the decisions you made all the design decisions you make about a certain concern for the stakeholders who, that has an interest in, in this concern should be documented somewhere. Because what this is all about is, is the following, questions and answers. Because the concern is in fact a set of questions. So a st stakeholder has an interest, some questions that he or she or they would like you, the architect, to provide an answer for. So, to a large extent, the view contains your answers to their questions. So, if the product manager is interested in a, uh, how the uh, system is structured, in order to, to, to use that to, to uh, organize the development teams. Well, you can provide a decomposition model to the product manager to answer that question. If someone is interested in uh, guarantees for, for latencies in the system, uh, well, then you have to provide models argumentation to convince or answer that question so so the view is is your answer or your answers and we talked about this this model here that many times you have multiple stakeholders that has the same question and if they have the same question or questions, well, then you can provide the same answers to them, of course. Uh, so documentation of architecture decisions is at one end this, provide answers to the questions. But if you remember from last time when we talked about the agility when you had like iterative and incremental. It means that also your answers will improve incrementally and iteratively. So the more you work on your architecture, the better your answers will be. The more details you can add to your answers. So it means that a view or the architectural documentation is a living document it's a it's a living changing thing because as you develop your uh architecture runway well that will change your decisions will change or be added and that means that the answer to the stakeholder will be slightly different maybe a little bit more precise a little bit more detailed than in the previous iteration so, uh, 
This is all about communication between the architects and the stakeholders. And we all know that that communication, well, you have synchronous communication. This is what we're doing now. I'm talking to you and you actually sit in the room or at home or wherever and you listen to me now. That's synchronous. Synchronous often means that you can also interact with me. So this is one use of your view, your models. You can take your decisions, your documentation, and you can show it to the stakeholders. You can talk to the product manager and say, hey, this is our decomposition. We believe that, okay, this is a fairly complex subsystem, so you better allocate a little bit more resources to that, whereas this one, it's in fact just something that we purchase as a service. So in fact, we just need some, 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 some glue here. So don't uh, put too many resources over there. So, so you can use this to, to, in a discussion, in a sort of a presentation. Uh, that is one alternative for, for alternative use for, for your architectural view. But then we also have this asynchronous uh, or even persistent, uh, where you actually store the information for someone else to use at some other point in time. And this could be like uh, an interface documentation for your uh, components, or it can be a timing model for your process. It can be many different things, but the use is for someone when the architect is not around. So, we provide answers to questions. Sometimes we present the answers. Sometimes we just document, document them and leave it for someone, someone else to interpret. Uh, that's more difficult. We all know that, uh, or at least I know that, if, if you present to someone, like students, uh, you can often see in their eyes if they got it or not. Uh, whereas if I provide a study guide, reading instructions, uh, have you guys read some chapters? I have no clue. Absolutely no clue. But, but in a tutorial, I can get a vague hunch that maybe something uh, actually, uh, so to say, stuck. And that's, that's, that's similar here, that when you present to a stakeholder, you can present, they can react, you can refine, you can make something more precise, you can clarify. So that is also often something that, at least I favor, that you actually talk to people. You can't always do that, of course, but the other type of documentation, asynchronous, is much more challenging and labor intense. It requires much more work to get it in shape. Uh, as I said in the beginning, this is another challenge, the fact that we have our views uh, on the uh, right hand side here, giving the impression that this is something that, well, we do at the end. And that is true, considering that this is the end of an iteration. You update your models throughout the process, each and every iteration, even if you have an inner iteration here, well, you update your models, of course, you populate your views, but at the end of the day, at the end of the iteration, you have, so to speak, well, this is our increment. This is our uh, increment for this strategy. And that is what the current version of this view reflects. Uh, so 
what we're talking about is, in fact, this. Continuous documentation, because it's iterative and it's in incremental. So it's not what, well, you might have in your mind when you read the chapters in the book where they have templates and, and all this and that with sections that you have to fill out. Because, well, you can, of course, use that. And you can use the, uh, the IEEE uh, or ISO 42010 uh, information model where they have sort of a different uh, almost like classes that you instantiate in objects and, and, and you develop your documentation. Uh, when you do well, when you look at them, you you get a feeling that okay, this is a document, and I have to fill in everything at one, so to say, at the end of of our design. But but this is incremental. This is something that will develop over time. So you have an early like bootstrapping where you so to say try to 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 start with something find the 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 take the first steps towards a complete strategy like your first decomposition that's where you start then you have a second iteration where you refine that first decomposition add more details maybe uh, split uh, subsystems into up into to more than well two or more uh, add uh, interfaces add uh, connections, etc. And you continue with that until, well, late in the development process where the document, the view, is fully populated, not just with the models, but also with the rationale, argumentation, discussion, why you ended up with the models you have in your view. So, if we connect back to, to an agile process, you know that at the end of a sprint, you have a review, and often you introduce, so to say, your achievements, your uh, uh, system achievements uh, to, to the customer or customer representative in a demonstration. You can do the same with your architecture. You can have your stakeholders because they have their questions. And you can even, if you don't do it formally during a, 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 a sprint review, you can actually, you can talk to them. You can propose an answer and you can present it not necessarily as a document, you can provide a sketch of your model, you can discuss, and together with the uh, stakeholder, you understand their question a little bit better, a little bit more, which means that in the next iteration, you can possibly add an ASR or refine one, so, so your requirements become more precise, which means that you can refine your strategy for the concern. And by that, you will iterate and improve incrementally. Uh, so you have a continuous documentation process where you add information that enriches your different views that you have on your architecture. Okay, it's time for an example, case study. So this is uh, Jed's rental. Uh, Jed's rental is is in principle. Well, it's not a it's not a web shop, but it's a it's a rental company, and uh, the the challenge here is is to come up with a system that helps uh, Jed 
uh, with this business, which is uh, the rental business. And in principle, it's all about customers making reservations for different uh, or various uh, items. Uh, these reservations are then uh, turned into to, uh, uh, contracts when they actually come and pick them up and, and rent them for some time period. And of course, there is some payment involved. So this is the, the uh, case study uh, description. Uh, it's, there's a lot of interesting things here, but it's, it's, it's not that uh, relevant for what we're doing today. Uh, but what's interesting here is, is really that, well, how should we as architects approach this? And well, last time we talked about, well, look at the backlog. Is there, well, you have some prioritization uh, for the different user stories. And with these user stories, you can start to uh, anal analyze them and see, okay, what is needed in terms of an architectural runway? To, to, to make this happen. Uh, so, if you look at the different stakeholders, um, we have Jed, we have Judy, and we have Lisa here. They are, uh, they have different, so to say, stakes in this system. Uh, you see some of the stakes in the middle. And, and, and now I try to do, well, something that is kind of, we're not, we're not following the recipe I, I, I talked about last time with where you actually have user stories and so on. Now we're just like focusing on the concerns, but take this as a, as a toolbox for that analysis. You can say, okay, is there some functionality in this uh, user story? Are there any security? Uh, performance, et cetera, et cetera. In order to identify ASRs. So if you look at the, the uh, problem statement, there is some information, but what do we do when we develop software? Well, we try to make our stakeholders happy. So in some way, we uh, talk to them, and this can be directly or indirectly. I would say in this case, since uh, Jen is the owner, uh, well, we most likely will talk to him. Uh, and these are functional requirements. Uh, the one at the top, nice if users could interact with those stores and get support. That's a functional requirement. But if you look at that one, uh, there are some, some architectural significant requirements hidden underneath. In order to, to make that happen, there must be an architectural runway that manages, for instance, the connection between the users and the different stores The second one, what is the timeline for a product like this? When can we notify our customers? Jed is interested to, okay, when can we have the big launch? When can we announce that in, in four weeks we will have an app? You can actually interact with us from your cell. Okay. This is a more obvious one. This is more or less what I... Uh, uh, mentioned earlier, you have some, some not product manager in this case, but the product manager has a question to answer, and this question comes from Jed. So, this can be an architectural 
but still it is uh something that you get from the in this case the owner this is judy she's uh, head of operations uh for her These are two very important concerns. Can we keep our old system? At least I know it works. She is not very interested in, in, in my, uh, or moving into something that she doesn't know, she doesn't trust. However, apparently there is something with the old system here uh make sure we get no prank reservations could be that there is some thing in the old system that is, well opens up for prank calls where someone makes phony reservations or there is no so to say checks who's actually calling so these are are her concerns and then we have Lisa. She runs her own business. Uh, she's concerned with the information. She has information about her clients. And she's concerned that if she feeds information into Jed's system, she loses control. So she for her, it's important that it's not used for any other purpose. So she wants to have some control of the data. The second one, she needs quick, quick responses. She sits down with, with uh, her customers, her clients, possibly planning a, a large company event or something like that and they make up plans and as they plan they also check availability tables everything uh plates cuddly everything just to make sure that on the dates they plan the event well everything is available so for her it's very important that this doesn't take time. It should be quick responses. And this is a fairly obvious one. There is a functional requirement with a performance requirement connected. And then at the uh, bottom here, I would love flexible payment. Uh, card, of course, PayPal, invoice, and cash. So now we met three stakeholders. And also some of their concerns. And in the, in the assignment you're currently preparing, uh, the first task was to identify stakeholders. Uh, that could be a straightforward exercise, but it can also be a little bit more challenging. But the fact that there, you start with stakeholders, it means that you can take the next step, which is trying to figure out what the concerns are for each stakeholder. Now you start to, to, to develop this, this table where you have, uh, depends on how you organize it, but, but if you have uh, actors, or sorry, stakeholders as, as, uh, as, as, as rows and, and uh, concerns as, as columns, that's one way to, to, to do it. But I've also seen the other way around where you have uh, stakeholders as columns and, and uh, concerns as roles. 
doesn't really matter. But what does matter is that at the, the, the crossings here, that you, you get it right. Because uh, functionality, we saw functionality, functional requirements for all three. They have some interest in functionality. So the next question here is, is it the same? But that is something that you can, can leave for the uh, 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 a fourth step, so to say. But it's important that you, you uh, make a little tick mark and possibly a, a, an annotation uh, trying to capture what you mean by functionality. What level of detail, how uh, complex studio models be, et cetera. Uh, then you have uh, security. It's not that, I think that Judy expressed a security concern. Lisa did it. You have something? Uh, I was gonna ask, uh, you know, at Babel, yeah. uh, do we need to have like vague concepts like weird functionality or do we need to have detail? Okay, so, so the question here is is if you if you if you had well, if you have to have all concerns, I I would say if you can if you can argue that this is well, uh, as I said before, that, that you will have uh, the, the possibility to, to merge uh, concerns. Yeah, concerns. You have a possibility to, 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 to uh, for instance, you can, you can have one view for functionality that, that meets all expectations from all stakeholders. So... Uh, Yeah, uh, now we have a question from, from Lawrence here. Okay, I would, uh, yeah, but in, in, the, in the, so, so the question here is, is uh, maybe it's easier if I, if I, if I, if I do it like, I, I, I add this to, before I answer your question. The question here is, it's supposed to be a stakeholder views table, not a stakeholders concern table. Uh, I thought at least, no, but, but since you have this stakeholder concern view, Lawrence, it's, it's well, it's not one or the other. Uh, it's a little bit of, of uh, well, for, for me, it's the, the concern is the, uh, so to say, interest. The view is the details about how detail, well, the details of that interest. So if someone has a general interest in functionality, well, that is a concern, but, but how detailed that interest is, is, is captured in the view. So, so uh, if, you, if you have a, well, if you call it a view or if you call it a concern, it's, it's, it's a bit, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but but uh, uh, since they use, well, stakeholder view mapping in, in, the, uh, in the book, I wanted to take you, so to say, the, the long route from stakeholder concern to view. So the purpose here is really to, 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 to come up with, so to say, an understanding of what is needed to answer the stakeholders' questions and present them these answers in the view. And uh, for this, they introduce viewpoints. 
what is a viewpoint? I ask, it's, it's, it's a stupid thing to ask a question in this, this setting, I, but I, if, you, if you have an answer to what a viewpoint is, uh, if you're online, just, just type it in the chat. If you, uh, what is a viewpoint? What is the difference between a viewpoint and a view? Okay, so a viewpoint is a generalization in the same way as you have an object and a class. It's a similar type of relation where you have the uh, class, a classifier, describing what is included in views of this class and how to populate these views. So in this case, say that we have the performance concern. What information is required to uh, answer the questions stakeholders have concerning performance. Okay, well, for that you can have a performance viewpoint, and that viewpoint includes different model kinds, and also instructions for how to create models of these model kinds. So, the viewpoint then, as you say, Lawrence here in the chat, it provides that perspective. It is, okay, we answer performance questions using these models and for our, for our to our, uh, uh, stakeholders. But creating the views, as I said in, in the beginning, it's an iterative inc incremental process. So should the viewpoints also be that? Are viewpoints also? iteratively, incrementally developed? Well, could be. Because if you add a model kind, or if you, so to say, change something in a model, you act, or in a viewpoint, you actually, so to say, modify the viewpoint. It's not, it's not a big thing, but it, it can, so to say, also develop with uh, the project. But what they have both in the book, but also mentioned in, in the ISO standard, is, is the fact that you can have viewpoint libraries. So you can have reusable, almost what you see in the book, they have a template for architectural views and they have a template for the architectural documentation. I'm not really a fan of documents, uh, except when grading students. Uh, because if you have a, a, an iterative incremental process, well, documents are kind of tedious. Uh, it's not the most efficient way to, to communicate. Uh, especially not if you have an agile process with rather short sprints where a lot of things happen. Well, if you put a lot of information in documents, you will end up in a situation where you actually update your documents instead of updating your, your software, adding value to your customers. So, so 
But still, we need to answer the questions. So, so how can we do this? Well, if you think about a database, I think that most of you have, have, have a database class somewhere uh, in, in, your, in your transcript. Uh, we have the concept of view also in databases, at least in relational databases. Uh, it's more or less a query, a stored query on, on your database. And this, this is a nice little analogy to, to our architectural concerns, the questions our stakeholders ask, and the view, which is the result of the stored query. But what happens if the data in the database changes? Well, if you ask the same or post the same query, the view will have the same structure, but it will change slightly, reflecting the data in the database. And uh, if you think about a viewpoint, that's more or less the relations, the tables in your relational database, because the viewpoint decides which information you store concerning your architecture. So, uh, preparing the answer to the stakeholder's question. Mm -hmm. Which models should we have? Which information should we have? So you could, in fact, almost think of this as a query. This should be transparent. It looks really nice on my screen, but it doesn't look nice here for some reason. But still, it shouldn't be this blurry. But, but it is a projection on information about your architecture. The viewpoint selects which information. The viewpoint selects the models you have. And the interesting here is that as you develop your system, as you lay out the architectural runway, your views will update, be updated. automatically. So in the best of worlds, we would have an architecture database where we store the models and then we could ask queries. There are some attempts in that direction, but believe it or not, it, it's, uh, it's not working uh, perfectly. Uh, it's not satisfying. Uh, all the expectations from stakeholders. So the role of the architect is to process that query. And that can be done during a meeting or in a document. Uh, adding to the problem, well, of course, the team here, the development team, they are also interested in, in, in the concerns the other stakeholders have. But on top of that, well, we have work division, uh, system operations, maintainability, availability, information. Uh, so we add more concerns. Uh, so the question here is, is do you document architecture for your team? There was a question mark at the end of that sentence. Yes, there are 
stakeholders, so yeah. They are stakeholders, so yeah. Of course, because architectural decisions are sort of the, the high level decisions that are important for the entire project. And if we have work division, like, well, this slide suggests, well, it's not sure, we're not certain that, that the three guys working in team A, which are like the three guys on top, and the two guys at the bottom here works for team B. If, if they reach an agreement and then spawn out, work on their things, well, there need to be some documentation of these decisions. Otherwise, we will probably end up with a mess at the end. Okay, so uh, definitely we work with architecture also within the development team. Not necessarily the same approach, but some kind of architectural documentation is needed. So, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? I don't expect you guys to answer that, but, uh, well, here it's, uh, of course, the left side of this triad. We start with the stakeholder, we identify the concerns, the questions they have, and then we come up with answers. But we do it then iteratively and incrementally. And since we do it iteratively, iteratively and incrementally, well, the uh, paper templates uh, is possibly not the best choice, at least not during the intense development. Uh, it could be that you prepare models for a design meeting or whatever, but uh, keep as much as you can uh, in a form where you can actually extract the information uh, when you need it. So, so it's updated automatically and, and not, well, you don't need to maintain, well, the system and the documentation as separate entities. That will just be a uh, recipe for uh, disaster. So, for all stakeholders, we now have the concerns and now, Lawrence, we identify the views. And uh, we can do this one by one, or we can check that, okay, some of these are definitely interesting to everyone, some are not. But when creating this table or whatever representation you have, in order to get an overview for which views which concerns are, or set of questions should be answers, answered for, for each of these stakeholders. Well, you will come to a situation where you discover architecturally significant requirements that could possibly come from different sources, different stakeholders but they are, so to say, relevant, grouped in the same concern. So, uh, ooh, that was, uh, I hope you can read this. Uh, these are uh, some nice old fashioned, uh, Requirement specification statements, the system or the application shall ident identify all of its human users before allowing them to use its capabilities. This is from a, a standard, that's why, a standard document, that's, that's why it's, uh, uh, the language is a little bit uh, sp 
authentication. The application shall verify the identity of all its users before allowing them to use its capabilities. And then we have authorization. The application shall not allow any customer to access any account information of any other customer. So these come from statements made by our stakeholders, Lisa, Judy, Jed. Uh, however, we had our security architect in this process, and this uh, architect, she is uh, familiar with this standard document for uh, specifying security requirements. So she takes their statements, translates them into requirement specification statements, and these will then become the ASRs for the security concern. So, even though there are no questions mar question marks at the end of these requirement statements, there are questions in these that the architects must answer or come up with answers to. And down here, well, the fourth one here is, is uh, probably some GDPR, that you should always have the possibility as a user to access all the information uh, stored about you in this, in this system. Uh, And now we come back to, to, the, to, to where, we, where it all started. Uh, how much information? To whom are we communicating? What are we communicating? And how much? The level of detail. And if you look at the guys on the left, Judy, Lisa, Jed, they're not interested in how necessarily they're more interested in what so it could be that for for uh, lisa for instance she is interested in performance she had a performance requirement but do you think that lisa is interested in how the system provide guarantees for response times, et cetera? Probably not. She's interested in that the system is fast. So should we include her when we present the performance view? This is a little bit of a trap here because there is all, I think you discovered it by now in this course, that there is all, almost never, or I would say, there is never a yes that is always a yes or a no that is always a no. It's often yes and no because it depends. And in this case, well, they have an interest in performance. They have an interest in security. But how? It's not of their interest. So the type of information we need to communicate to them is more about a statement that this is guaranteed by the system. 
So they don't need the details about how it's done, how it's achieved. Uh, how do you discover that? Well, the question. They don't ask for how, they ask for a guarantee. Whereas the development team up here, they ask for a completely different level of detail in the information. If we talk about authorization or whatever, or um, any aspect of information security, well, it could be relevant for both team A and team B. Or it could be relevant for whatever division you have in, in development teams. But the level of detail, it could be, how do I uh, uh, authorize a, a, uh, a, uh, a user or authenticate a user, sorry. How do I identify users? How do I authorize a request? And these type of questions come from the development team. And it could be that one of them is working with the uh, security architect, coming up with a strategy that answers these questions. And at the end of the day, it's um, communicated as a design with an API that they use to, uh, to, to do this. But what we're talking about now is really outlining the views, trying to figure out what type of information is needed to uh, convey the answers to their questions. For uh, Jed, Judy, and Lisa in the left hand corner, the purpose is to show that the system addresses their concerns. Not the same as for the team, which is uh, show how the system addresses the concerns. That's a different, there is a big difference between convincing that and showing how. Given the type of stakeholders we have, left hand side, well, most likely, Jed, Judy, and Lisa has uh, not that much experience from software development. So we have to work more with presentations than documentation. Running demonstrators, running applications. But at the beginning, we can work with interface mockups. We can have scenario walkthroughs to get the uh, rental procedures right, reservation procedures right, etc normal things you do in a software development project to understand well if you use uh, use the stories or whatever to get the stories right but here on the right hand side you need to think about different types of models structure models behavior models and argumentation models. So structure, what we have, the tools, behavior, how the tools are used, and argumentation, various models that you can use to argue why this design satisfies the architectural significant requirements for this particular concern. So, 
outlining the documentation, use templates. Yes, we have the template in the book. We have a template in the ISO standard. But if it looks like the one on the left, well, that is the documentation template. And the one on the right, which is the single view uh, description, you can see that, well, one could come up with a, a uh, um, and this is fairly common that, that they have like a, a wiki or something, where you have like a dynamic document where you can actually uh, come up with a, 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 you have a template and then wiki collaborative editing, people can add information, you can have discussions about the information, you can actually use it as a collaborative tool for where you post arguments, where you uh, post alternatives, and, and at the end of the day you have a decision and the decision is documented uh, instantly. Uh, so, and the same of course for review. And, and the interesting thing with the wiki is, is of course that if you want to, you can also invite stakeholders to view. Uh, the problem there is that, that if it's a working document, it might need some polishing before you, you let them in. So, outlining the views and then populating the views. Um, the challenge here is, is to, to align the design process with the documentation so that you don't make them separate or don't separate them too much so that you don't end up with a design process and then okay now we have to sit down and document because we all know that documentation is is not what we wake up in the morning uh, to do it's it's something that we do because we have to and if we can do it while designing. That's a nice thingy. Okay. So we're closing in on the end here. So some observations. The database here. Think of it as a database. You have information about your architecture. It's stored in various models. The models are the tables, the relations. Then you have your stakeholders. They post questions or their concerns. They are interested in something, the questions. The queries are processed on the current models the information you have in the database, so to speak, and you get an answer, the view. Hopefully the view is an answer to the question the stakeholder asked. The view is a living document. The architectural document is a living document. I talked about wikis. Collaborative editing, discussions, this is the style of work. This is the style of documentation that we need. We don't need papers, binders, except for your hand-ins, your assignments, because it's not well suited for how we work. Because we work with iterations, we work with increments, and we work with integration, where you combine views, where you split views, maybe you focus even more on a certain detail, a living document. So, 
Viewpoints are the recipe with the cooking instructions. So the ingredients and the cooking instructions. Views are the answers to the questions at a specific point in time. So until the system is decommissioned and never ever used again, it is a living document, an open document. And the models, well, those are your tables full, loaded with information for you to select from and project on certain aspects. So um, that was all for today. I hope it gave you some new perspectives on these things. Do we have any questions? Give it a, some seconds for you guys to Yes. Okay, we have a question here. If we say the view is an answer, can we say viewpoint is how to answer? I would say yes. That is, uh, so to say, what is needed to answer uh, that, uh, that question. Uh, and that question could be a question that belongs to a a concern because you have, can have many questions that belong to uh, one of one concern. Are there ways of projecting models? In my mind, they are just pictures. Uh, if you have, if you have a, uh, if you have a drawing, uh, well, you can always focus in, and if you have a. Uh, uh, an hierarchical model, for instance, uh, of course, you can always uh, zoom in on one subsystem. You can uh, expand that subsystem and look at the inner structure of that subsystem. That is one example of, of projection. And of course, the selection is to, to, to select that particular subsystem. So uh, that's the nice thing with computer science. You can, most of the things you can actually uh, uh, apply in, in, in many different uh, domains. So, so uh, in this case, relational databases. Okay, uh, seems that we're out of questions. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, uh, I just talked to the vice chancellor uh, this morning and from Monday, uh, we're back fully on campus. So I hope to see many more in the room uh, in the lectures to come. Uh, so uh, I'm not saying that this is over, but it's over for now. So uh, see you soon on campus. Uh, take care. And for you guys, uh, well, of course, there will be Zoom links, but we have, because we have students following the program on, on as, as distance learning. Uh, so yes, there will be Zoom links, but I like to have you in the room so that you can ask questions and we can get some more interaction. And, and, and uh, it's, it's uh, now we have five patient guys sitting in the room. I would love to see 25. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, see you guys uh, next week, I think. Bye. Thank you.